Good morning, good morning. Happy Wednesday. So today we are going to do a rainbow. I was trying to think of something that would be appropriate for St. Patrick's Day, but not be too cliche, you know. Everybody does shamrocks, everybody does green beer. So I thought, uh, today I will do a rainbow. And uh, I know that the first time I tried doing a rainbow, I put the rainbow on top of my um, sky. Mistake number one. So let me just switch over to my demo mode here and show you a couple of examples of uh, other rainbows that I've painted in watercolor. So um, I'm not going to focus on really on, on the landscape so much today as um, just creating the rainbow itself. And uh, of course, rainbows are synonymous with storms, right? So we have uh, rain and, and we have a darker type of sky. It's usually not quite that blue when you see the rainbow, but um, there is a particular sequence to, to the coloring that goes on here. So unlike what you might think, you might think paint the sky first and then add the rainbow on, I'm going to begin with the rainbow itself. Um, <clears throat> but just before I do, I'm going to say good morning to everybody who's just arriving. Thank you so much for joining. And, uh, you know, let a friend know that uh, we're about to begin and uh, they can get in on the fun too. So, I thought about wearing my green today, but I'm going to save that for tomorrow <laughs> when it's officially St. Patrick's Day. And, uh, there, we're going to set this aside. Okay. So the first thing I have here is my white paper, of course. I don't have anything drawn on here. I'm just going to, um, you know, paint on paper. I don't want to draw out my rainbow because I really don't want to have pencil lines in there. So um, I'm, I'm basically just going to use the, the natural curve of my arm to get my, my shape. If I were doing the, the other part, like if you were doing a full rainbow and you were doing the other part, I would turn my board and, and work this way to, to work it that way. Left-handed, of course, it would be easier um, if you were doing the other half of the rainbow. Uh, oh, wonderful. Thank you. Um, yeah, we got Penetanguishing, we've got Indiana, Germany. Um, yeah, always, always mention where you're from. I, I always love seeing where people come from. All right, so I'm um, going to make this uh, a fairly short demo today because um, just I have a full schedule. <clears throat> I am going to begin, first of all, with a <clears throat> sorry synthetic brush. Why synthetic? Well, the main reason is that I don't want to get my paper too wet. Well, in this case, like usually I'm wetting my paper quite a lot, but I just want to wet it a little bit to add in my colors. So I'm going to be using this to wet my paper, but I'm going to get my colors ready first. Okay, that's going to be very important. I need to get my colors ready first. So <clears throat> at the base of the rainbow, let's grab my, my other reference here. Um, I'm going to be starting with this this really nice turquoisey kind of color at the bottom. So I'm going to use some cerulean blue. Now my cerulean blue happens to be a um, a hue. So it is a mixture. It's not uh, genuine cerulean. <clears throat> and I'm going to get that on there. I don't want to have this paint like super runny. So I want to get a little less water in it. Next, I'm going to have a nice bright yellow, so I'm going to use an Areolin. Areolin, this also is a hue. This is uh, Da Vinci watercolors. And I'm also going to be working on Arches 140 pound cold press paper for today. I say that every week, don't I? <laughs> I, use, I use Arches all the time. I buy a big, big uh, batch of it and then that's what I work from. Uh, next, I will be using um, a nice bright red. So I'll have, I'm going to use permanent rose for this. I 
And my last color, I don't really have a dioxazine purple on here, but I have quinacridone violet. And I can make it more purple if I add some more blue to it. So I'll put a little cobalt together and make this more of a purple. There we go. So I have a nice purple there. <clears throat> a lot of the other colors are just going to happen by, uh, you know, just by melting into each other. All right, so do I have enough? I want to make sure I have enough color here. And I also want to make sure uh, my color's not too uh, soupy. I won't have any control. If, the, if I put down really wet color on a damp surface, it'll spread and I won't have any um, say over what direction it goes. So, I'm going to put my rainbow right about here. Okay, use that shape there. So I'm going to take my damp brush, and my, this synthetic brush, by the way, will only hold a bit of water. So I don't want it too wet, but I, I don't want to always start in the same spot either. Sometimes I come from the outside in, and then I spread it back again. Okay, so I'm making it damp. I'm also making this area wider than I'm going to use for the rainbow. Spreading it so that it's evenly distributed. And I'm going to begin with my blue. So I'm using a, let's clean this brush out thoroughly first. I'm going to be using a in, uh, sorry, a squirrel hair brush here, and it has a nice point, but I don't really need a point for this so much as I need a little bit of control. So this is cerulean blue hue that I'm using, and I'm going to blot my brush so that I take all the extra moisture out of this. So I'm going to begin here because maybe that's where my land will be. And I'm going to put as even a stroke on here as I can. There we go. <clears throat> get that out of my brush. Now I'm going to get my yellow. And right kissing this line here, I am going to um, I'm going to follow that same contour. Okay, rinse my brush and now I move to my red <clears throat> so my I'm using a permanent rose for this blot my brush so it's not going to overwhelm the area with too much moisture Where those two overlap, they're going to start creating a little bit of orange. And then I'm going to get my purple on here, and then I'll show you what else I'm going to do to this. So things are beginning to dry. Actually, I'm going to switch right now to this flat brush. Now, this flat brush holds a little moisture, so I'm going to take a little of that off. So I'm blotting it a little bit. And I'm just going to use the same direction here. Rinse it again and blot. Rinse and blot. And I can make these colors melt together so beautifully with this damp brush. As long as those paints are still a little bit wet, I can get this really nice blend happening here. 
All right, now this part here, I'm going to have to dampen this because it was beginning to dry. And that's the thing, right? You never get all your colors on before things start to dry. But you don't want to introduce a lot of water. That's why I'm not using a, a big brush that'll hold tons of water here. I'm using this synthetic because it only holds a little. And uh, then I can come in and create my rainbow effect. So if I want it a little better blended, I'm going to blot my synthetic brush. Make sure it's not too wet. That's, that's extremely important. And soften, soften, soften. So I end up, the, the blue and the yellow have now blended together to give me a little bit of green. I don't have too much in the way of an orange yet. Maybe I can bring in a little bit more of that yellow overlap my my pink a little bit just to get a little bit more orangey color in here. Damp brush again. blot. Okay, so everything's really soft and gentle here. No hard lines, all that kind of thing. So, uh, so I'm able to get that. Now, I would allow this to dry before going on to doing your sky, because if you, if you don't allow this to dry, uh, you really have run a big risk of messing up the, that beautiful blend that you have. So I'm just going to add a little bit more blue here. Keep that brush clean. There we go. All right, so I am going to dry this really quickly. Now, I am actually using a, a different dryer than I usually use here. I'm using a heat tool. Uh, I have no masking fluid on here, so I don't need to worry about, um, you know, saving masking fluid or anything like that. So. This one's really quiet. Maybe I can run it without having to mute. And this will dry it pretty quickly. <clears throat> I've done just that little bit of melting together of those colors. That slight overlap is giving me the secondary colors like oranges and, and the greens and things like that. But I want to set this so that I don't mess it up when I go to add my sky in. So we have Northern Ontario, Austin. Um, oh, Austin! You know what? I'm going. I'm coming to Austin on uh, <laughs> Saturday. Uh, Oakville. Okay, Diane. What is the WGA? I should know what that is. I've seen it before. I should know what it is. I just can't think of what it is. <clears throat> We've got India, Stony Creek, London. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, so that paper is, is quite warm with this tool, and I will need to allow it to um, cool off before attempting to paint on, 
on it. If I try to paint on hot paper, the first thing that's going to happen is my paint's going to evaporate. So, no need to... Uh, <clears throat> Might as well wait for that. Now, the one thing I want you to notice about the the um, the uh, um, rainbow right now is how transparent the color is. That you know the the white of the paper is is coming through those colors. Don't put your colors down really heavy. Also, don't use things like cadmium colors. And the reason being that if you use a cadmium color, while yes, it does have beautiful, bright, rich color, the key is that it's rich. It's also opaque. And those opaque colors that you use for uh, uh, a rainbow will cover up the, the luminosity. You see in this image here how, how it looks like there's almost a light on, like it's a beams of light, basically. And so, you know, when the sun hits this, this moisture in the air and creates this rainbow effect, it needs to be, it needs to look illuminated. So in order to keep that illumination, you need to make, be using very transparent color, clean color, um, but, but transparent, like not, don't put so much color down that you're covering up the white of the paper. This, this white paper is actually your white, your light source. When you're actually painting. Um, okay, so as I said, I'm not going to I'm not going to get into the whole landscape thing and all of that, but I want to show you how to complete the rest of the sky. And there there may be even some some clouds and things like that in your sky, which which you might incorporate as well. But um, <clears throat> okay, so this is this is cooling down now, and I'm going to use clean water. And I will wet everything. Let's use a bigger brush here. I will use clean water. The water's not that clean. Maybe I should... Yeah, it's clean enough. Clean enough. I will brush it across. Now I have a bigger area to cover here, so I'm going to be using fairly wet color here. I want to put it on but not brush too much. I don't want to start blending and activating that first layer. So, I will come in with a larger brush. This is a squirrel hair brush. My sky, now we have a bit of a, it's a rainy day, obviously, if it, there's a rainbow. So, I want to get a little bit of uh, grayness into that sky. So, I'm going to take I'm going to take cobalt blue here. Now, cobalt blue, let me zoom out. My cobalt blue is, you know, very clean looking and that would look like a nice bright sunny day and I don't want that. So, I'm going to I'm going to dull it with a little bit of put a little permanent rose into it. That makes it a bit purple, kind of like what I have over here, but not quite as pink. And um, I'm going to put just a little bit of, I'll use a little Payne's Gray, just hardly any, but just a little bit to dull this down, make it look a little bit more stormy. Let's get a little more blue. There. There, we have kind of a stormy blue-gray going here. So that's what I'm going to use. And... I'm going to start away from the rainbow first. I want to see how far this um, paint is is going to blend. Like how far it's going to travel. And I don't want to I don't want a hard line on my rainbow like that. So I will use I will use a spray bottle. And I'm going to get this paint moving a little bit. And just the same way I blended my, um, my colors here, I'm going to take my 
that flat brush, the synthetic one again. And I'm going to get that blended right there, right up, up against the rainbow. There. Go through the rest of this, which is really wet over here. And you can even pick a little bit up here. And I will use some of this on the other side as well. I probably want to put some land down here, so I'm just going to make this very soft at the bottom. getting low on paint here. And if you want to create the look of light in your rainbow, I mean you know that a rainbow always shows up so much better once the sun comes out like you've got this dark stormy sky and then the sun comes out and boy that rainbow really shows against a darker sky so all right so I'm getting a like it's still a smooth sky but but this area where the rainbow is is um, looking very bright I'm thinking I probably will add a little bit more here, but um, we'll see how this dries. Um, I, I could buy a little time, I guess, if I spritz it, but I don't want to spritz it when it's at this point, because if I did, all I would end up with is little little dots of, of uh, you know, like little mini blossoms where the spray bottle sort of spits at the uh, paper there. So I need to let this dry if I want to darken things. But I'll add in a little bit of cloud, perhaps. All right, so if I were to add in some cloud, I would have to make sure that my brush were drier than what the paper is. The other, the other safe thing to do by the way, would be to allow it to dry, re-wet the paper, and then add your clouds on. And then your your clouds won't look like cardboard cutouts that you know you just paste it on. You're, you're still working on a wet surface, but the 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 layer underneath has settled into the paper and now it's it's kind of set, right? So you're better off just sort of leaving that um, to dry. So let let's speed this one up. Use my handy dandy new tool here and get this dry. Wipe the tape off because the tape always, the paint on the tape, it's going to take much longer to dry because the tape isn't absorbent. So I always wipe my edges first. That also keeps any of that wet paint from finding its way back onto your painting and um, making a blossom. You don't want that. Yeah, Barbara, you are right. It is a very foggy day today. Um, it's because the air is so warm after all that snow yesterday. Now you can see how the sky is really getting smooth as I'm doing this. You know, the the colors have melted together and, and that's the beauty of wetting it first is so you can get smoother color, right? You all know that. A cotton candy watercolor tutorial. Oh my goodness. I would have to find a reference picture for that, I guess. 
I, I, I'm guessing that if you're looking for a cotton candy watercolor tutorial, <laughs> that um, you have a cotton candy painting to do. <laughs> I, I, I have to say, that's the first time I've been asked to do cotton candy. But I can tell you with something very light and airy like cotton candy, you need soft edges like this. This is very quiet, quiet, this, uh, this little dryer thing. It, it produces more heat than, than air, so it dries it quick, but without quite so much noise. Usually I have to mute. So this is good. I can I can still dry and not have all the noise. Um, yeah, the the trees could be added to dry paper for sure, um, but not necessarily. I mean, I could I could put the trees on on a wet background and have them sort of uh, faded. Let me see what I did on my other one. Okay, so you can see on this one here, these trees back here, I might have done these a bit wet. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna start adding in a little bit of cloud. Like this is this is sort of the rainbow just after the storm is passed kind of thing. This one's more like just kind of in progress, and it's obviously zoomed in. Like you know you don't usually see a rainbow that big, so you know you you wouldn't take a big wide rainbow like this and then put a far away landscape because that would look kind of crazy. You know the rainbows aren't that fat when you see them in the sky. So, you know, if you're going to do a landscape that shows it far away, your uh, your actual rainbow should be a little bit narrower. So don't make that mistake. It looks a little unnatural. So let's, um, let's wet this again. I'm using my big um, soft brush here. This is a this is called a uh, number one inch silver black velvet oval brush. I love this brush actually. It um, it holds a lot, has very soft bristles, and uh, I find it very good for wetting the paper or putting down big washes. It's a silver black velvet oval brush. Oval just meaning the, this this shape that it has, but it has a pretty fat belly, so it holds lots and it has soft bristles. All right, I don't want to again. I don't want to be brushing around too much and disturbing any of those first layers. I don't want to activate any of that first application of color. So for my clouds, again, I'm going to go kind of the sky color here, but I will go a little bit more gray since it is stormy. So a little more Payne's gray added into this. And I'm going to blot my brush because I want a little bit of control. And I'm just Coming in and adding in some clouds. <clears throat> clouds are typically flatter on the bottom than they are on top. They're also darker at the bottom. That's where all the extra shadow is. You remember the sun is above all these clouds. A little bit more weight at the bottom and maybe some of these wispies. I know this isn't in the original picture, uh, but I'm incorporating it. Now, I won't be putting a pot of gold at the bottom of this rainbow. I know tomorrow's St. Patrick's Day, but I don't want to get that cliche. <laughs> but, all right, keep the little flatter along the bottom. 
And actually this cloud here, I'm going to make this one a little bit larger because as it goes, as it comes over your head, the clouds are typically going to get larger. They're going to get smaller and skinnier the far, further away they are. So you can create a little bit of perspective, and yes, it can come into the rainbow. You can create a bit of perspective in your sky by uh, just by how you're placing your clouds. Okay, so I can feel the papers beginning to um, set up, that it's beginning to dry a little bit, so which means that I'm just about done here. If I keep playing into, um, like if I keep adding more down here and things like that, I know it's going to be hard edged. So I'm going to stop at this point and just let it dry and see how I like it. And then I will, you know, add in whatever landscape I want. So um, this is going to be a very short one today. I'm not going to add in all of my water, but, or all my um, uh, landscape, but... I just want to make one note here, and that is that it, you can see in this reference picture here that there's rainbow colors that are reflecting in the water. So if I were to do water in my scene, and my water would be pretty much lighter than most things here, <clears throat> I could create the same effect in the water, but I'm going to start by wetting the water area. So I'll just put like a, a water land there, or water line there. And I'll come in with all my rainbow colors. So Rather than arching them though, they are going to be pretty much lined up here, straight up and down. Blot my brush each time. Start with cerulean, same colors I used above. That red was a little too strong, right? Pull some of it off with that damp brush and then a bit of purple. Now it's not really lined up too well, is it? But look here. That's because it's reflecting up a little bit higher, right? <clears throat> and then I need the color for my water, which will be very similar to my cloud. So let's get a little bit of watercolor in here. Really lay down that as wet as I can. I did wet this area first, so that should melt together pretty well. All right, but it looks a little corny, doesn't it? So that's where I need to come in with this flat brush. And I'm gonna start right here in the middle because it's gonna be a lot softer. And I'm just gonna start pulling down Rinse my brush again. Start walking it out. And so then it becomes a little bit more blended than the actual rainbow itself, because that's what's going to happen in waters. It's going to get a little bit more blended. It actually needs a little more color too, so I'm going to add a little bit more here. Just 
I've got to watch the red. It's really powerful. And a little bit of purple. Here, I'll just add it to my red. There. So there's my colors a little bit stronger. And again, I'm going to rinse off this flat brush and just help the blending process a little bit. It also removes a little color, so that's why I went a little stronger there. Okay, so I would be adding in my land and all of that sort of thing on, on top of this. Uh, if your land, for example, if you had green and you put it on top of purple, you're going to get a really dark color. But if you have light, like in this picture here, if you have light on your land, um, you know, I would lift that out or paint around uh, bits of land where I was, need to have lighter color. I would paint around those shapes. So you could mask it off if you wanted, but I, I actually don't like masking in landscape, but uh, to get a little bit of lighter green in there, I would remove some of the color just by lifting, like that. Um, yeah, and then I would put my other shore there, that kind of thing. So, um, your clocks haven't gone forward yet. Oh. Yes, we had a time change since uh, since I did my last uh, demo, but it's always Eastern time, <laughs> and uh, we do have clock. We do change our clocks here in Ontario. Um, that's too bad. Well, you know what? There's always the replays, and ah, I want to point something out here. Okay, I didn't wipe my corners. Now, I'm always talking about wiping off my tape, and this is why. I want you to see this. I'm, I neglected to, to wipe off my corner here. And that's why I always say wipe your corners. Because when the paper starts to settle down, the, that water finds its way, or the paint, the wet stuff on the tape finds its way back onto your painting, and you can get blossoms from the corners. All right. So, I can maybe uh, smooth that out, but we'll see. Try to massage some of that color back into the paper with an almost dry brush. Can almost do it. Add a little more color maybe. But uh, that's the sort of thing you want to try to avoid. So because you see it doesn't doesn't look good, does it? But that's why you wipe your tape. Alright, so let's wrap this one up. Uh, you know, you've got the whole idea of getting the rainbow in here. Um, you, you work the rainbow first, you blend with a, not a wet brush, just a very, um, just a barely damp brush, like follow the contour. Don't ever go across like this, you, you know, don't blend all over the place. There, you, you have to follow the contour of the um, rainbow and you have to clean this blending brush, I'll call this a blending brush, you have to clean this in between. Right? You don't want to transfer the blue to the red area and, and start making purples um, you know, where you're trying to get red or where you're trying to get orange or, or anything like that. Um, so anyway, uh, we will wrap this up and uh, yeah, that's, that's all right. I think that's okay. I think I could definitely add in some land here. And uh, it's, I won't I won't paint it in, but I'll I'll maybe just sort of draw it in, just so you can get an idea. Um, 
it's hard to draw on wet paper, but all right, so I could draw in my my landscape here. Like I would have to go over my clouds here to, to get my trees in there if they're going to be very large. Like I said, you want to do a large landscape in, in something like this if, you're, if your rainbow's that big. Okay, that's it. So thank you very much for joining me. And uh, we, will oh, we will not see you next week. Um, I will be away. As I said, I'm going to Austin and I will not... Uh, be doing my Wednesday live demo next week. So uh, mark your calendars. I'm, I will be back the following week. And um, that's, uh, that's, that's where I'm at. So thanks again. Have a super week. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Have a, have a green beer for me. <laughs> and we shall see you in two weeks. Bye for now.